Okay, who knows what you're trying to find out? How to get a bag with a shawty in a house, baby, who knows? If you need to know how, said you wanna know how You can find out right now, cause bro knows He knows Bro knows what you tryna find out Three, two, one, Bruno, no starts now Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Bruno's Podcast uh, if you guys haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'm trying to grow the YouTube channel. If you don't subscribe, it doesn't grow. If you don't follow the boy on the gram, follow the boy on the gram at BRVNO. Uh, pump for the podcast today. I got a personal friend of mine. He also owns a jewelry store here in Denver. Um, we've been connected for a couple of years, man. So thanks for coming through. We're finally making it happen. We got a uh, Christian bowling, AKA Christian stone. What's going on, bro? Man, what's up, man? Appreciate you having me. It's yeah. been way too long, bro. It's a cool set, huh? Bro, what? The set is, is dope, man. I like the, the rug, the carpet, you know, the wallpaper, everything. This is fire. Yeah, bro. So this place is actually called The Warehouse. And so when you came in, you saw they have, like, different sets and stuff. Right, right. Um, And it's actually, like, got that stage, all that stuff. So I was thinking uh, even if we ever go back to doing... You know, those networking events that we originally did. This right. might be a cool spot to do something like that, you know? I definitely think so. And it's a good location, yeah. too. Yeah, bro. It's, like, right in the middle of Denver. So I've been doing a lot of podcasts here just because it's, you know, it's rough getting people all the way up to Springs. And it's just a mission. And then they're in your house. And you're like, damn. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. You guys should go. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so you guys Had a homie do. stay for way too long. But it was all good, bro. He was good vibes. But uh, we had other shit to do. Um, so, so, so what you been on, bro? Bro, you already know, man. We're always yeah, grinding, grind. hustling, dude. That's that's really all I'm ever doing. Bro. Yeah. 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 How's uh just the jewelry game, bro? Man, it's great, dude. Yeah. It's been great. God has been good. Yeah. God has been good. I've been doing a lot of moving around. Um, starting to move around in New York a little bit more oh, now. Nice, so no, I was, I've been having a lot of fun with it. Yeah. So uh, for those people who don't know, right? Um, you're like second generation uh, jewelry store owner, right? right? So there's like Jeffrey B. Jewelers, right? Which is your dad. And then you've kind of come up and built your brand within there. Yep. Christian exactly. Stone. So um, tell me a little bit about the hustle that, that your dad put in to, to get the store going. Because I know it, it's a crazy story. Dude, it's like nuts. The story's nuts. Well, he's been he's been in the industry since uh, the late 80s, right? Yeah. But he started being on the road for the last 30 years or 40 years ago now, yeah. but um, selling jewelry on the road, you know, yeah. all across the country, going to, you know, India, Dubai, China, making a lot of different connections as far as the manufacturing side of things goes, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, he got off the road 30 years later and opened up Jeffrey B. Jewelers in uh, South Aurora. Yeah, bro, that's awesome. And now you guys, are, are you guys still at Cherry Creek over there? Yep. Mm -hmm. Nice, bro. Yeah. And uh, tell me where kind of Christian Stone came from and what was the idea there? Because I know you guys you know, are remarketing to almost a different group of people, right? Mm -hmm. I think Jeffrey B. was, like, very, like, old school, like, you know, jewelry you buy, like, your wife or something, right? And right. Christian Stones just coming with the sauce. I mean, that's really much, pretty much what it was. It's like, you know, since he did spend all that time on the road, you know, building a lot of different connections, we had so much potential that we could use as far as manufacturing goes, yeah. right? And it's like, you know, I was thinking about it, why limit ourselves? to you know the traditional type of jewelry if we have these amazing connections as far as being able to put this stuff together comes yeah. in you know what i'm saying so yeah. then i started christian stone you know i'm you know i'm going out you know I'm, i learned all the the cad programs because i do all the designing myself yeah. you know and you know i started to be able to utilize our connections a little bit more to be able to do some stuff that's like you know a little bit more impressive yeah. as far as you know the bling thing goes yeah i'll throw <laughs> some diamonds on that shit you know right. um so also you guys probably don't know this i actually got my wife's engagement ring from you guys and a couple other pieces you know we've been dripping out the life but um that was really cool too because they make custom pieces and uh, i think you know when i decided i wanted to propose to jordan it was like all right but i i need the ring by like saturday yeah. and it's like <laughs> tuesday <laughs> and so uh they got after it bro you made it happen and uh, it was like a hell of a time crunch though i remember you had to get it like overnight ship the diamond and all this other crazy stuff how often uh are you having to put place together like that bro you'd be surprised <laughs> really? it's, it's almost like i would say it's probably every other month 
Yeah. Like if somebody had ordered something, either a wedding ring or anniversary pre- present or even birthday, you know, yeah. Valentine's Day is always last minute, bro. Nobody really yeah. comes, <laughs> comes at a time. Biggest decision of your life. They just make it last second. Oh, you know? yeah. Like we put everything together and we forgot that we have to actually pick the rings out. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild, dude. Um, and I know you've dripped out like a lot of people in uh, Colorado, too. You know, I think... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you made like Trevor Rich a, a, a chain, right? And, and some Bronco players. I mean, which one was uh, kind of like the the craziest one, I guess? Oh, man, that's a hard one. I got a lot of insight into these because I was always stopping by. And yeah. so I'd see like, oh, you're making so-and-so's chain. So I'm just like, oh, bro, that looks cool before they even got it, you know? So, right, yeah. You uh, a lot of these of chains I, I caught <laughs> before they saw it. Oh, shoot. As far as my favorite one. I mean, that's tough because there's, like, different designing aspects to each one. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would have to be between, you know, um, my boy OJ and uh, my boy Dre. Yeah. Yeah, they both got some nice ones. Some some crazy ones? Yeah. Yeah. I've always thought it was funny that, like, you know, you have all, like, the capabilities to make the chains and stuff, but you're always rocking, like... You know, your tennis chain or something a little more simple. I, I love the swagger, bro. Because I would be so loud. I'm just 40 on them, you know, like just leaning forward. Yeah, just have yeah. Like, like a kilo on your neck. Yeah, bro, exactly. <laughs> you know, get that shit snatched from you, you know, somewhere. But um, no, dude, and uh, it, you also got into like watchmaking, right? You, mm. wh- where did you even learn to do that? Is that something you just picked up over time? Just no. playing around with them? No, nah, bro. I actually went to a, a watchmaking school. For yeah. like two years. Oh damn! And uh, studied under a um a master watchmaker. Yeah. For like a good eight to tw- ten months. Yeah. And then like, like a little internship. And exactly like an internship, for like a master watchmaker, and then opened my business probably three years after I started. Dang. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool when you go in uh when you go in your office there because it's like. The front is definitely client facing, but then you open that back door over there, and it's uh. It's like a legit shop, bro. Right. You got like shop equipment and stuff. You know, you've probably put together uh, a couple bracelets and necklaces that have just broken over time. Bro, I call but it you got the all the tools. It's <laughs> yeah. the lab, bro. And then it's like I talk to people and they're like, "Where you at?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm at the at the lab." And they're like, oh, "What?" I'm like, "Oh, I mean the jewelry store." My fault. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> well, uh, and also, how's uh, technology helped you guys? Because now you got that like. Whatever that is, like a three, what what is that? Like a three D like printing thing? You guys like design it all on there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, uh, at first, like way back when, you know, people we used to make um, jewelry pieces by carving the wax by hand. Dang. Yeah. So it was like that was like a whole. You know, oh, you gotta like session. make the mold. Right. 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 Oh, so, so is they, that like a printer that you have in there? Exactly. Yeah. So it Dang. took so it take out you know the by hand carvings and replacing it with a with a three D printer. So yeah. it's like you know. So it's like perfect every time. Exactly. Dude, that's so sick. Dang. Okay. Okay. Uh, as an Akron boy, right? Are, are you you are from Akron, right? You're from Ohio. Akron. How's uh? You been watching this LeBron shit? Did you How watch him? <laughs> did you watch him hit? Well, it sucks they lost, but did you watch him hit the hit the all time leading shot? And, I had uh, to. Yeah. It was like like you know coming from Akron, like you you had to watch. You yeah, know what I'm saying, of but course. but no, nah, I mean coming from Akron, Ohio, you know it's definitely different than Colorado. But yeah, just being watching you know LeBron on on the scene like that, going to the greatest. Yeah, uh, guys probably got like. Five more years if he wants to. Ten, maybe. If he really wanted to. I mean, honestly, he's probably got more than that, for real. Yeah. Because he ha- he hasn't even, like, tried to play any other positions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, like, yeah. he can mess around and move to, like, the four. Like, yeah. Like, a small forward or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of where he started, right? I feel like he kind of started there, and now he's just running point. Right. Is he your goat? <sighs> <laughs> I know. I just, I just lobbed that one up. You know? I know, man. Oh man, greatest of all time, as far as basketball, or just like yeah, or just basketball, yeah, just basketball, just basketball, NBA nah, greatest of all time. Say, I can't say. <laughs> Who do you think? Jordan? I think, I think Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's I mean, just, I was five? just basketball though. Like, if yeah. we're talking about basketball and you know. What it's on and off the court. Oh, yeah, LeBron, like, not even yeah. close. But yeah. just basketball has got to be. I heard uh, Michael Jordan was, like, not a good guy off the court. <laughs> just, yeah. like, never gave money back. Just, like, fuck everybody. Right. Um, 
which you know the killer mentality i guess yeah something like um what's your top five bro if you had a top five of all around. time yeah well it's definitely the three you know you got mike kobe Bron. you think Bron's three though in that order <sighs> <laughs> I we're, mean, we're asking the tough questions bro i would i would put him i would put him up there with, with kobe honestly yeah yeah I mean, yeah. you gotta give him. You gotta give him his respect. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, like yes, he he hasn't played as long as as them, and he might have. You know, by the time he got into the league, you know, they have already you know done so much for the league. But yeah, I mean, come on, man. Like, yeah. it's still it's still Brian. Like, yeah, I think so too, bro. He like in my eyes, I don't know. He might be the goat. It just depends. There's still the ring thing, you know. Right. I think uh, when people say like, oh. Um, you know, Michael Jordan went six times, won six times. Like, yes, that is a flex, but to make it ten times is pretty wild. And, you know, even some of the times he made it up there with, like, the, the chip he won with Cleveland, like, that team had nobody. <laughs> it was just, like, him, really, you know. Thanks. I mean, he went through a lot as yeah. a player, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was, like, he had his magic era to where he was dishing the ball off way more. You know, yeah. he had a scoring era. He had, he had a lot of different, you know – like genres of basketball in his yeah. career. I mean, but he's he's definitely a, a goat. Are you a Nuggets fan now or what? I mean, I don't watch them. But no, nah. Not even now when they're winning. It's so nice to watch them win. It is nice to watch them win. Yeah. Like I watch, I catch the highlights. Yeah. You know what I'm oh, me so. too. <laughs> <laughs> I always say it's nice to watch them win, but I haven't watched the game. Even when. You know, even when I go to the game, I just get distracted with other stuff. I'm like, oh, let me go get some food. Right. Let me go up into the sweet thing or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Just kind of bounce around. Um, but I might have to catch one of these games, bro. That They've been playing good. It's crazy to have an MVP that's, like, yeah. not really athletic. Like, right. Watching Jokic play is yeah. interesting. It's I mean, it's, it's I've just never fundamental seen basketball like just, like. Right. Yeah. And just. Getting buckets, getting assists, getting yeah. rebounds, and, you know, killing his position. It's interesting to watch, though. It's like yeah. he doesn't really – he's like, ah, you know, this is what I do. Yeah, it's like, like 40 points. He didn't even right. notice him score him. Exactly. Know? It's just like It's almost like casual. he doesn't even notice. Like, I'm yeah. like, 40. You, do you ever bet at all on any type of sports? Are you a betting guy? Not really, no. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I just got into it. I got, like, uh, DraftKings. Yeah. DraftKings. Okay. So I got some uh, – I got DraftKings, and yesterday, bro, I made $1,000 – just betting, so they gave me all these, like, free money, right? Like, free $25 things. Um, so I had $200 of it, mm -hmm. and I just started betting. I literally Googled, because uh, you could bet on the spread, right? So, like, are they going to win or lose by a certain amount? Right. And I just started betting yesterday, like, on my drive home, just looking at the score, I'm like, no way they lose by 25 points, and I would just throw, like, $100 bet. Um your boy made a thousand bucks, bro. So I might be a betting guy. If you need a bookie, you know, let me know. I got you. Say less. I yeah. actually, I tried like the most recent that I bet it was um, for the All Star game really? last year, yeah. and I think I won. I won like three thousand dollars off off of like like one or two bets. I forget the other one, but the biggest one was saying like Melo wasn't gonna score like twenty five points or something. Really? And I was like, come on, like Melo. He, Especially at an All Star game when it's just like you know dunk, saying? dunk, lob. You know they just play no defense. It's just like everybody's just balling out. Exactly. And I was like, dude, Melo, is this his first All Star game yeah. or whatever it was? I think it was an All Star game. But yeah. I'm like, he's not, he's not, not getting twenty five. Yeah. Points. So I put like five hundred dollars on that, and yeah. it was like a big spread on it too. Dang, <laughs> bro, that's wild. I uh, I went up to L. A. Um, this last weekend to watch my buddy Grant fight. That's the podcast we lost. Sorry, Grant. Um, <laughs> but uh, I bet on him and this other guy, like Darian Caldwell, and I put some money on there, and uh, uh, I did, like, a parlay. So counting both of them to win just, like, increases the odds, right? And, bro, this dude, Darian Caldwell, first fight just gets robbed, like, beats the guy most rounds, right? That's kind of how, like, UFC scoring is. You have to win, like, a majority of the rounds. So you could get your ass beat in one round. Right. But if you win the other two, you win the fight. Um, this dude just got robbed. And I'm sitting there. with Me and my brother were, like, floor seats. I'm, like, feeling like I should go up there and say something. or Because I'm just sitting here, like, I can't believe I just lost this bet. You know, it was, like, a lock, I thought. So... 
then I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to bet, you know. Right. But maybe it's the spread thing. I don't know. It's just something fun to do. Right. Um, I know when you came in, we were talking a little bit about uh, the the AI stuff, right? The uh, chat, GPT, and all this other stuff. What what uh, what AI have you been looking at other than that? Have you just been playing around with, like, different softwares? Because I know, like, a lot of people are building shit. Yeah. Um, I've actually played around with a lot of them just to, you know, stay up, you know, with yeah, the technology, bro. Yeah. So, I mean, like, there's the, the mid-journey. Yeah. Right? With the whole uh, creating digital art. Yeah. Um, I think that's those two are the most that I play with. But I also want to play with the one that's, like, the, supposed to be the eye thing where it's, like, you know, it shows you looking at the camera even if you're not looking at Ooh, the camera. Oh, bro, I could use that. <laughs> yeah, they got that already? Yeah, Damn. Dude. So it's like you we got to run our script. videos through that, bro. Because I always forget there's a camera. I'll start talking, and I'm like, okay, turn my body this way, eyes that way. You know? Right, and it's crazy because, like, you could be reading a script. Yeah. Right? So you have, you're looking down here, but it will show you looking directly at the camera. Right. Like, it looks real, too. I'm going gonna, uh, gonna to need to throw that in the notes real quick. <laughs> um. But what else have you been up to, bro? You just kind of been kicking it, just grinding, traveling a lot. How's New York been? Dude, what? New yeah. York? I love New York, bro. Really? Yeah. Even after, like, the... I haven't been there since before the pandemic. And then I was just hearing, like, all these crazy stories, like, trash just piled up. I went to New York during 2020, actually. Really? During yeah. COVID? Yeah. Like, <laughs> That's wild. Like, September, October. And it was yeah. like a ghost town. It was weird. Really? Yeah. But now it's like, it's pretty much back. Yeah. I don't want to say back to 100%, <laughs> yeah. but it's like back to like 80%. You know, it's New York when somebody just shoulder checks you and just <laughs> doesn't even say sorry, just walking by. You oh, know? yeah. No. That's how you know it's back to New York. You're just getting shoulder checked on the streets. Yeah. Know? It's not as many people. <laughs> like, Times Square yeah. doesn't have as many people. So that's oh, like really? a good thing. But yeah. it's still pretty busy, though. Yeah. Beyond that, have you been traveling any other places? No, not really, dude. Yeah, like I've been, staying home. yeah, I've been, you know, back and forth to New York a few times since Fashion Week, um, and then just working on a couple projects that I have coming up, man. Yeah, um, yeah. Any anything that you can leak? Any big projects or what? Oh, man. Um, well, okay. One of them is a design line, right? So yeah. I'm, I'm putting together my own design line. And yeah. I have like a few, like a small collection. Like yeah. Christian Stone Originals, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Is that like the necklace that you were originally making with the little, like, essence? like the e on That'll that? be one of them. Okay, Yeah, cool. that's going to be one in the collection. But it's going to yeah. be like a collection, maybe like two or three different pendants, a couple rings, a couple bracelets. Ooh. Yeah, Some so rings gonna, would be sick, bro. Yeah. You got to let me know when that drops. Bro, I got you. Yeah. That's but I got so another sick. one that's coming out. Another project is coming out. It's going yeah. to be dope. But yeah. it's, it's actually... You know, putting together like technology, so it's just gonna yeah. have um, NF NFC technology built into okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so like uh, those like a virtual business card that just like tap some shit. Right. So yeah. this one, like you, it's gonna be like um either a pendant or a ring. Yeah. You tap it to your phone, it's gonna have like some dope information. Bro, like that. that's crazy. Yeah. So. Yeah, I definitely need that. Just like a. Ooh, do you hear that or what? Okay. <laughs> I'm just hearing something through the mic. But uh no, that'd be really cool, bro. Like your business card just like tap my ring. Mm -hmm. Dang. How are you going to work that in? Is that just typically a little chip on there or um it's it's going to be it's a whole thing, bro. Like cuz it actually has to be like the the piece have to be manufactured around the chip, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, but it is going to be like chip technology, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is that, Brian? Oh, okay. Sorry, boys. Stay cold. <laughs> well, that's awesome. You know, so before you came on here, I just kind of wanted to play around with the chat GPT stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just, like, looking up, like, random topics, you know? Right. Um, so the first one that popped up was just talking about, like, uh, the world of conspiracy theories and mysteries is what it says, right? So, um I want to ask you, do you believe in any, like, weird conspiracies that maybe other people would think that you're kind of crazy for? Like, do you think that Earth's flat or something? No, I don't think that Earth's yeah. flat. But I do think <laughs> aliens are a thing, though. Yeah? I don't know. Yeah. I guess that's not a conspiracy yeah. theory. Because there's, like... I feel like it's proven now. That's it, what I'm saying. Which is so weird that people aren't, like, freaking out about it. 
Right. It's just like, oh, yeah, like, aliens yeah. are real. Oh, yeah, UFOs. Yeah. Right. They just dropped it during COVID, you right. know? And no, I was one above the casino last night. It was crazy. Yeah, there was one. <laughs> Bro, uh, apparently there's this new phone, like a Samsung 22 or whatever it is and bro the zoom on the phone is so crazy so there I, I saw this video and it's a guy like across the parking lot in his car texting and the camera was able to zoom and see the text and this dude's like in a condo just was able to zoom and see the text and there was like a ufo the other day like above the moon and this shit like zoomed in to the point where you could see like the craters on the moon and you could see the UFO. What? Yeah. I gotta check that out. I haven't yeah. heard of Not it. really a conspiracy, but that's just a <laughs> crazy ass phone. Right. But there's no way out, you know, if the texts are green, I can't buy it. Yeah. Maybe I'll buy it, but it's like a backup phone. And I just, I only use it to look at people's texts. Yeah. You know <laughs> the texts are green. Can't have um, the green text messages. Do you believe in the conspiracy of uh, the shit at DIA? Um, I mean, I don't know, dude. Like, I, do you believe in like new world order or this stuff? I I do to an extent. You yeah. Know what I'm like, I feel like there's so much information out there that there's no way that people are right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like it's a thing, but I don't think it's anything like yeah. Like what everybody thinks or guesses it is. Well, because if you think about like a lot of stories, they're kind of like rooted in some truth. You yeah. Know? Right. That's why I think it's crazy that the stories of like vampires or what whatever the other one is like the wolf man what is that werewolf right yeah, yeah. like those have been around forever so i'm like wondering what's up with that you know i mean if there's like vampires out here running around or that'd be crazy bro. Yeah. you might be looking at him just kidding <laughs> i'm definitely team jacob bro so don't, don't get it twisted all right don't get it twisted um uh, no man well let me see here what the other one was uh and you've have you heard of the mandela effect yeah, bro. Yeah. That, that's actually nuts because I yeah. could have swore it was mirror, mirror on the wall. It's not? No. That's one of them? It's magic mirror on the wall. Or at least that's it's magic it. mirror? Right. All right, let me look a few up. Hold on. Because <laughs> now I'm tripping. I thought it was mirror, mirror for sure. Hold on. Mandela effects. Because, you know, I think it's called that because apparently, you know, Nelson Mandela mm -hmm. had supposedly, like, died in prison. He was, like, a prisoner of war or something. Mm -hmm. But then he, like, won a presidential election, and then, like, everybody remembers him dying, you know? Right. And he never died. Um, another one, I think, is, uh, like, the Berenstein Bears. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Mandela effect examples. I never know what to Google either, bro. I'm always, like, writing the wrong shit. Um, let's see. Okay. So here's some examples, bro. Um Curious George doesn't have a tail. I don't. Rem I don't really watch. Like Curious this dude, George. he's never had a tail, has he? Damn, bro, you're you're capping right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nelson Mandela's okay. What about the peanut butter? Right, what's that called? There's like a famous brand starts the GIF? with Jif. Jif. Okay, so it's Jif, not Jiffy. Everybody calls it Jiffy. Um. Looney Tunes, how do you spell tunes? With two O's. No, it's T U N E S. T U N E S. Well, I mean, what? Well, you have to, we'd have to go back to um, like that. You know? Space Jam, right? Space yeah. Jam, I would have it, I would assume. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I feel like you know all the right ones. I swear to God, I thought Curious George had a, a tail. Well, anyways, bro. Anyways. Um, I'm super pumped that you're here. How's, uh, you still got your girl? Y'all still in a relationship? You know, I am still in a relationship. Yeah, yeah I'm so proud of you, bro. It's going well. Yeah, well, you better drip her out, bro. I you mean, know? you know, it's, it's coming together. It's coming together. <laughs> I was so excited when I met her, so I was pumped for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, back when you and I met, we were still doing, as I mentioned before, I think, I don't know if we were rolling, but we were doing, um those networking events and this is like pre COVID this is like five years ago at this point. Um, have you been still going to like networking events? Have you still been putting something together? Um, I haven't. No, yeah. I mean like me going outside is different nowadays. Dude. Yeah. I don't, like I'm outside, but people ever see me outside. You yeah. Know I mean? so it's like, yeah. I usually try and, you know, figure <laughs> Just out running a go. Chipotle real quick. <laughs> That's the only time I'm outside, bro. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I've actually, I've been able to, to link up with some, with some pretty dope people. 
you know, and, and be yeah. outside in, in different circles. And Dude, a lot of cool creatives, I think, coming out of Denver recently, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, funny story. So Aaron Gordon, right, on the on the Nuggets, um, he came here to the warehouse to do, like, a, a photo shoot because he has, like, a, a cologne brand. Right. So this dude walks in, he's like freaking six, seven or however tall he is, you know, and uh, he walks in, does the photo shoot. And uh, Ashton, the guy you met out front, um, didn't know that it was Aaron Gordon and just thought that he was like a cologne maker or something. <laughs> so like the whole time the dude's here, just big ass six, seven dude, you know, right. taking pics everywhere, taking pics right there. He didn't know that he was Aaron Gordon, you know. And then, like, later on when he posts it and, like, tags them or whatever, he's like, holy shit, this guy's on the Nuggets. Like, Jesus. didn't even think to be like, uh, so what's up, bro? Like, uh, you play? <laughs> you, you know, you play any sports? You're just 6'7", 280. He only won a dunk contest. Yeah. It's so crazy. <laughs> uh, me and my brother Brian, when we went to a Nuggets game and we, like, sat courtside and stuff, he hit a game winner. And then uh, as he was walking by, he just high-fived my little brother. I just thought it was so cool. That was dope. And so I'm a fan of him. I don't really um, – like I said, I don't really watch basketball anymore. But, mm. you know, um, any other good books, bro? I know we're always vibing on some books. Oh, bro, I've been reading so much recently. Really? Yeah. Reading or listening? Both, honestly. Both? Yeah. yeah. I, I was having this debate on a couple podcasts ago, and it was just like, does listening to books still count? Is reading because my wife says no, which means I haven't read a book in like forever. You know why do they say it doesn't count? I don't know because apparently it's not reading. You have to say like I've been listening, and I'm just like damn. But that I feel like that takes the credit away. <laughs> like <laughs> then I don't like, even want to read or say anything. You know because I mean I guess I mean it's still a book regardless. Right, You're getting the information. Yeah, retaining it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying it's I've story. had to mention the Alchemist twenty times, and Brian just said he he started reading it. Yeah, but I literally have it. I got a tattoo of it now, and uh, I mention it every single podcast, every single one. And Brian's finally reading it. We're like eight months into making podcasts, you know. So I had to crack the whip. Brian, buy the book, you know. No, I'm just kidding. Book. He did it on his own. It's a great book. It is, it is a great book. Yeah. What have you been reading lately? Um. Let's see, I've been reading the Science of Getting Rich. It's a good one. Yeah. Um, a mentor of mine put me on to the Purple Cow. The Purple Cow. Yeah, huh? it's a marketing. I'm gonna need book. to write that down. The Purple Cow. I haven't heard of that. It's a good one. This is branding. Oh yeah. Mm. Okay, the Purple Cow. Um, the I want to say. I don't. I forget the number, but it's yeah. like it's either. I think it's seven. Seven spiritual seven, laws, maybe. Uh, the seven immutable. Oh. Immutable laws of branding. I haven't heard that. Oh, so you're really getting into the branding stuff now? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Okay. And is that just? Uh, do you feel like you're always picking up stuff that? You know, you're reading about things that like you're trying to create. A lot of times. I mean, because it sounds like that kind of aligns with like, you know, the the pieces that you're about to put together, the little collection. Well, I mean, it's all about it's all about standing out. You yeah, know what I'm saying it's like, I mean, there's there's so many different jewelers out there. I mean, yeah. not necessarily like a big pool in Colorado, but right. like, you know, when I'm in New York, you know, and then I say I'm a jeweler, and they're like, oh yeah, I got a homie who's a jeweler, and then it's yeah. like, all right, it's like but. damn. <laughs> I'm the only jeweler. <laughs> You're the first person to ever say that, right? right? You know, and I'm like, I'm like, all right. So I got to figure out how to, you know, stand out from the crowd a little bit. At least yeah. like when they go to the social media or you know see something yeah. that I'm doing, it stands out a little bit more than than the competition. So. You you've been playing around with like uh like TikTok or anything? You ever get on there, bro? Nah. You I got an old to. soul, is what I think. I, I, just, I, man, I hate TikTok, bro. But it's like I've been looking into different ways to get into it, though. Right. You know what I'm saying because yeah. I know it's like it's important. You gotta get. Yeah. It. You gotta get on it. Yeah. But no, I haven't. I haven't. Did we? You know, now Brian kind of like manages a lot of like my social media shit, but um, for a long time, like uh, I just refused to get on there. Like even. Before it was TikTok, it was, like, Musical.ly, and my little brother had, like, a lot of followers on there. It was even making money, bro, and he was, like, 15 years old. And he's like, you should make one. I'm like, fuck that. 
<laughs> and I, for years, I was just like, no, nah, fuck that. And now I'm like wishing I would have made it a long time ago, you know. But the – and I don't even – I'm like a third-party TikTok watcher because my wife just watches it like in bed. And then I'm just like <laughs> peeking over randomly and just watching certain videos, you know. Right. But I don't think my algorithm is – figured it out but are you on there at least consuming or not not really not really yeah. like i have the app on my yeah. phone but i'm hardly ever on it though yeah yeah i yeah. know i gotta catch up with the i mean i try to keep up with the whole technology and everything but the whole tiktok thing bro is, yeah bro. i gotta get on it but i'm not having it. <laughs> <laughs> not having it bro not having it well dude um i think i think that uh as kind of Denver grows, we've always talked about this, right? Uh, a lot of us just kind of need to stay connected, you know, and continue building some of these relationships. And early on, I think you and I like masterminded a lot of stuff, just putting people together. And now it's so cool that I'll see like people posting or something. And it's like, oh, they didn't know each other until they were introduced by like some of the events we threw or just through homie relationships. Um, but obviously, when you're, like, in the lab, right, just circles get smaller. Um, how have you been able to, like, even balance having, like, friendships or, you know, do you feel like a lone wolf sometimes? Or, or what does life look like from that perspective, I guess? Um, I mean, I guess it is it is a balance, you know. It's it's like, yeah. you know, you have to figure out how to step away from, from the drawing board, you know, yeah. and, like, get some downtime. And, you know, you got your homies that – you know, you hit up that you might have known for a long time or even new homies, you know, but yeah. it's definitely, it's a hard balance though, you know, especially when you're hungry, you know, grinding yeah. for something, trying to build something and you get distracted and time goes by and yeah. you might have not contacted with your friends yeah. in a while. So, I mean, you know, it's a give and take. It's always a sacrifice. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You just got to figure out what you're willing to sacrifice. That's true, bro. And I feel, you know, when I moved to Colorado Springs, it was basically like, I know nobody there. And the only time I leave the house is if I'm going to, like, wrestling practice or to the gym. Mm -hmm. So I'm, like, literally, and I work from home. So I, it's sometimes I don't even, like, see humans, yeah. you know. And uh, especially after COVID, I think we would, like, let's say we meet up, like, group of friends, whatever, and I would get home, and I'm just, like, exhausted. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that, like, just chatting with people, conversations just take up, like, a lot of energy. Right. Um, so I think like protecting your energy is definitely important. Right. Yeah. Uh, what things do you do to like keep energy levels high? You know, because I think a lot of times like maybe it's like, oh, I play a video game, you know, or I meditate or whatever it may be. I mean, what what do you do that's like Christian on downtime? Um, honestly, dude, it's it's either I got I like to I like to relax, bro. Yeah, that's my thing. Yeah, I mess around. Chill. I go get like massages. Like I have like yeah. a whole day, oh, like a nice. spa day almost. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you get like, like manicures or what, bro? Nah, like manicure not manicures, guy. but I'll go pedicure. get like a pedicure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Something just to chill, bro. Maybe like a massage. I yeah. got a homegirl who hooks me up with facials sometimes. Yeah, you know what okay. I'm saying? Yeah. Like I just like to relax, dude. Like yeah. I like. You know, bass the whole nine yards. Dang, bro. I'm trying bro. to relax, dude. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's funny, bro. I I like to relax too, but honestly, like massages, for example, like I love them, mm. but I don't like feeling relaxed. Like when my body is like just super relaxed, it just makes me feel weird. Really? So I like being like my back is stiff or <laughs> like my back is sore as fuck, you know? Um, Cause sometimes uh, most massages I've ever gotten, I fall asleep like yeah. during the massage and I'm just snoring and you know, they could not even be massaging me. I don't know. I'm getting ripped <laughs> off, you know? Um, but when you do like a bath, Tell me, like, what a, a Christian stone bath looks like. Are you, like, lighting candles? You, nah. Nah? I mean, or is like, it, like, a quick just hot water? It's, jumping? like, a quick hot water. Like, yeah. it's, like, a I got planted. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I got planted. Like, I got the, the massage. You know, yeah. my, you know, my girl will hit me up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, she'll go and make me, like, yo, you know, I got, yeah. I'm trying to go get you a got, facial. like, bath bombs and shit? <laughs> nah, no bath bombs. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> it's blowing bubbles. And <laughs> because it's, like, outside of that, I'm, I'm hustling. You know what I'm saying? I like, it's, like, like, you know, I'm planning my days out, planning yeah. my weeks out, yeah. you know, I'm contacting people, I'm yeah. figuring out what I need to keep up with, yeah. you know, as far as the business is concerned, networking, yeah. making sure, you know, you, you tapped in with your people and everything. And like you said, it's exhausting. Yeah, bro. Yeah, so. It's I on that know. hamster wheel, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of stuff, like, I didn't even know until I was married that, like, existed. Mm -hmm. 
So now I'm getting into like, oh, like there's like 10 types of facial cleanser. I, I used to be like the one like three and one, four and one, like face wash, shampoo, conditioner. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm just like one squirt for everything. Um, have you felt that way? Are you like learning more about products and stuff as you know like you're in a relationship or you do certain things like that that's really what did it you know what i'm saying like yeah. she was putting me on to a lot of different things like yeah. you know what are you using i'm like oh washing, <laughs> washing my face what are you, what are you using the black one? shit over there right like, you supposed to use it on your body i'm like is my face part of my <laughs> what are you talking about that's crazy bro because your skin's so clear i would figure you had like a crazy routine just like you know just to relax, just bro. Blast, that's, bro. That's <laughs> just relax. One. You gotta figure out to relax, bro. In the midst of the mayhem. Yeah. Man. Well, when uh when the New Year started, did you have any um, you know, like New Year's resolutions or you know, a lot of the things I put on my New Year's resolutions are more like daily actions. Like I will do this every day. Yeah. What What did you have, or do you, do you even think about stuff like that? You know. Absolutely, you gotta <clears> plan it out. You know, yeah. lack of what is it? Planning or poor fail? planning. Failing, failing a plan is planning to fail. Oh, that's right? good. Man. That's a good one. That's not what I was thinking. I was thinking uh, proper planning prevents piss poor performance, like the five like the P's five or P's. something. Yeah. What was yours again? Say that again. Uh, failing a plan is planning to fail. Dang, bro. Yeah. That's a tattoo right there. I'm going <laughs> to have to write that down. But yeah, bro. I mean, mine was more like like goals more than anything else. Because yeah. like, I've been... I've been trying to get super proficient with like a three month span. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. like I'm like my I only go by quarters. So it's like, you know, I got goals to hit in ninety days. Yeah. You know, and I, I try to plan my ninety days down to a T to make sure I'm on top yeah. of what I need to be doing. Have you uh ever read the twelve week work here? Mm. Oh, you need that then. That's like specifically what you need. Twelve week work year. Okay. Twelve week work year. Yeah. So it basically you set your goals for the year, but then you break them down in 12 weeks mm -hmm. and try to accomplish them in 12 weeks. But I think the idea is uh, helping you just track and stay on top of that. That's actually a book that I would get both. I'd get the audio. I just like the audio version. Mm -hmm. um, but it has, like, uh, pictures and, like, diagrams that you can, like, start planning stuff out. Um, but when I read that book, dude, it helped me break down a lot of goals because – or see the amount of time I was wasting, you know? So, like, I'll wake up in the morning. I got my checklist. Here's what I need to do. So, 10 things, right? I make, like, little check boxes, And then I just check them off as I'm going through. Um, not that I have to do everything on there. But I do want to feel guilty if I didn't do everything on there. Yeah. Um, and, and so, that's something that I got from that. But you'll realize just, like, how much time you're wasting, you know? Like, maybe you put the same thing on. Like, I have... Uh, and I'm not going to say his name, but I have to call this guy back. Call him back. That's all I got to do. Right. That shit has been on there for three weeks. Every single day, I just move it. And I'm like, fuck, I got to call this guy back. And I never do. Um, Bro, so maybe you. it's not meant to be. I don't know. Well, honestly, talking to people on the phone is like my biggest pet. Yeah. Thing, I yeah. hate it. <laughs> I, but his like, it's not even that I don't want to call him. Right. It's just like that's the shit that gets pushed off. Right. And so... uh I don't know. Sometimes, like, life works that way. But how do you plan your day? Do you do it at night? Do you do it in the morning? I mean, what are you typically doing? Um, I probably I do it more at night more yeah. than anything else and then kind of review it in the morning. Like, I wake yeah. up early and, like, yeah. you know, try and – I mean, and you don't want to, like, schedule it to the point where, you know, it's like a computer. You know yeah. what I'm You want to have some time to live life. Yeah. But, you know, try to just, like like you said, like, find a find a balance. Yeah. That's the most important part, bro. And it's like I try to even schedule in downtime, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I've been using um, timers more. Really? Yeah. Like you, have you heard of the little five-minute cleanup, right? Uh-uh. Well, I guess I forget why I've seen it, but it's like if you set a timer for five minutes to clean your room every day, then it would be, like, way cleaner. Really? Yeah, than just trying Dang, to clean it. bro. I need so to start like, doing that. So I took that, that, that uh theory right and just yeah. kind of put it to other stuff like okay like, if you be more proficient at cleaning your room maybe you'll be more proficient at like getting a task done you know what i'm saying like, yeah bro that's actually a, a good idea i should probably that's that's one of so like even my car or my office or everywhere else is clean because my wife does it but <laughs> my car and my office uh it's not even like messy it's just like shit that piles up over time so like my car it's literally just sweaters from after the gym i'll wear it once throw it in the car mm. 
And then before I know it, literally the back seat has like 15 sweaters. And I just got to grab all the sweaters, you know. Right. But it's because I'm too lazy, like just reach over, grab the sweater and walk inside, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think we're all figuring it out, you know, um, as you try different stuff, you know. And, and I think what's really important is just staying locked in. Right. Yeah, staying yeah. locked into the vision, staying locked into the dream, doing the things that are going to get you there, you know? Yep. I mean, because it's always always about, you know, putting that work in. Yeah, you know, where are you going you gonna to keep doing more than the next guy because somebody yeah. was doing it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, you're telling me, bro, we're, this might be like the 30-something podcast that we've done. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, same thing with that, right? New experience. I thought it was going to be like start the podcast – Week later, podcast blows up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Meanwhile, it took me three weeks to even get one going because, mm -hmm. bro, I messed up so many times. It was like, didn't charge the battery, didn't have a memory card in it, or like the battery dies. I don't even know. We keep going, and I only got like two minutes of the podcast, deleting the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, and then also on the back end, like, Luckily, Brian handles most of that, but it's uh, there's all this like analytics. Like, what do you need to do? You need to put a title, like, all this other stuff. Right. And I literally thought I was like, okay, I'm a 10, 10 podcast in this shit's huge. Uh, <laughs> and so here we are at 30, but we're learning, you know, bro. We're that's learning. what I've learned, dude. And it's like it, it, it makes it a little bit easier when you figure out that you know, you, you get better when you, when you mess up, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like I was actually talking about this on another podcast that I did, but it was like, it was like, like somebody might be watching your podcast and yeah. they're thinking like, wow, why does it sound so good? Yeah. But they don't know that you went through three different mics because yeah. you know, messed up the first four podcasts and you know, yeah. you got a mic, a, a mic that it was, you know, bad for close up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's the little yeah. intricate We got stuff. some of those. We got some yeah. of those mics. Trust me, they're in the bag. <laughs> we got an extra one. It's in the bag. It's one of those mics, you know? Yeah, it's the small little, the little learning curves, bro. That's yeah. what, you know, you learn from those and you do better the next time. And I think it's also like taking from different areas, you know, because <clears throat> even in like the jewelry game, right, there's not like specific, like, for example, basketball, right? You could look up videos on like everything basketball related, like how to shoot a free throw, how to dribble, blah, blah, blah. Like, and there's millions of people making that, but there's such a limited amount of like stuff around specific niches within like entrepreneurship, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, you're never going to get too far copying other people, right? You kind of got to make it your own. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you got to like pull from one thing, pull from another, um, you know, read that book I told you and, uh, <laughs> you know, just kind of piece it all together. And I feel like maybe that's life's journey, right? I, I think a lot of times maybe we see somebody doing well and you think they have it all together, mm -hmm. right? But even in this example, it's like me, you, um, we're still piecing it together. It's like, have it, it's like knowing what the puzzle should look like, but not know maybe like having all the pieces, but not having the what the puzzle should look like. So you're just kind of like fitting it randomly, you know, until it makes sense. Um, well, cool, bro. Thanks for coming. Um, I think we need to do another one at some point for sure. Uh, stick around because we got Jonas Griffith uh, coming up here. But um, anything you want to leave the people with, bro? Any more jewels? Um, just be on the lookout, man. I got some, some some stuff that's about to be dropping here soon. Yeah, so Christian's dropping his new collection. <laughs> be on the lookout for that. Where can the people follow you, bro? Christian Stone at Christian Stone, nice and simple. Yeah, at Christian Stone, the OG. All right, folks, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>